In the previous video, we talked about client components and some of the benefits using them. In this video, we're gonna start using server components and we're gonna start discussing all the benefits that you're getting from server components, such as data fetching. So let's do that. Go with Sloba. As I mentioned, in this video, we're gonna discuss how we can fetch data using Next.js server components. So let's see how this works in React by default. So usually you have a you know, application so or client here. Then uh, you have server. So let's add a server here. And uh, at the end, you have a database here, database. And what usually happens is when you want to make a fetch request, obviously client talks to the server and then server talks to the database and then database gets response back to the server and server responds back to the client. This is usually how it works in React application, but let's see what happens if you're using Next.js server components. So actually you just have a server component which can communicate with database directly and then perform uh, whatever data manipulation you want to do or you know some rendering or you, you can communicate with other servers. What are the benefits of this? The first benefit is you don't have to use use effect hook, which we're gonna see in a couple of uh, seconds. The other thing is that this is usually much, much faster. So you have access to the databases directly as well, and you're not relying on the client internet connection or speed you know, to fetch this information. It can be faster. And also the fetch uh, method from Next.js server component has some wrapper around the fetch uh, method, which actually gives you some additional options such as caching. So let's see this in, in action. So let's open up a bar component in our application. And this is the component where we're, we're gonna fetch the data. So the first thing, as I said, we don't have to use user fact. So what we need to do is we want to make our component as asynchronous. So this is something that you cannot do on React, obviously. And now let's store in a variable the endpoint that we're gonna call. So let's name it as URL. And I already uh, copied the URL here. And this is the cocktail database uh, free endpoint. You can use the same. Why I use this is because actually it has a lot of information and different images. So it's uh, thecocktaildb.com. And what I'm doing here is I'm fetching just all the cocktails that have Z as a first letter. And now we can make fetch requests. So let's create a new variable and let's uh, name it as response. So what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna await for this in, uh, request to finish up. So we're just gonna use the fetch method, which is the wrapper as a set to a native fetch method. And we're just gonna call the URL here. And now what we wanna do with this response, we wanna convert it to the JSON. So let's create a new variable and let's name it as a data. And we're just gonna await for the response to convert to the JSON here, like so. And at the end, we can just console.log the data that we got. And let me save this. Uh, let me open up a terminal here. And if we go to the bar, if I refresh, we can see that we got a bunch of information in the terminal. And if you go and find the name, we can see that actually some of the cocktails actually start with a Z letter. So this is how you actually fetch data in your server components. And this is all for this tutorial. See you in the next one. And if you want to support my channel and get a full source code of every single video that I'm doing, feel free to check out patreon.com code with Sloba to get full access. See you there. Well, that's all for this video. And thanks for stopping by. And don't forget to subscribe. Code with Sloba. Thank you for watching the entire video. To see more videos like this, click here.